with the grace of the Lord Christ. We're going to continue our lesson. Uh, I'm going to continue with Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 14. And the Lord commanded me at the time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might observe in the land in which you cross over to possess. Take careful heed to yourselves, for you saw no form when the Lord spoke to you at a Horeb out of the midst of the fire, lest you act corruptly and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any animal that is on the earth, or the likeness of any winged bird that flies in the air, the likeness of anything that creeps on the ground, or the likeness of any fish that is in the water beneath the water. And take heed lest you lift your eyes to heaven, when you see the sun and the moon and the stars of the host of heaven, you feel driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord your God has given to other peoples under the whole heaven as a heritage. But the Lord has taken you and brought you out of the iron furnace, out of the out of Egypt, to be his people and inheritance as you are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes and swore that I would not cross over the Jordan, that I would not enter the good land which the Lord your God has given you as an inheritance. But I must die in this land, I must not cross over the Jordan. But you shall cross over and possess the good land. Take heed to yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make for yourselves a carved image in the form of anything which the Lord your God has forbidden you. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God. When you beget children and grandchildren and have grown old in the land and I corruptly make a carved image in the form of anything and do evil in the sight of the Lord your God, you provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth a witness against you this day that you will soon utterly perish from the land which you cross over the Jordan to possess. You will not prolong your days in it, but it will be utterly destroyed. And the Lord will scatter you among the peoples, and you will be left few in number among the nations where the Lord will drive you. And there you will serve God, the work of man's hands, wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. And from there, you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart, with all your soul. When you are in distress, and all these things come upon you in the latter days, when you turn the Lord your God and obey His voice, for the Lord your God is a merciful God, He will not forsake you, nor destroy you, nor forget the covenant of your fathers, which you see He swore to them. For ask now concerning the days that are past, which were before you, since the day that God created man on the earth, and ask from one end of heaven to the other, whether any great thing, like, like this has happened, or anything like it has been heard. Did any people ever hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire?
or did God and live or did God ever try to go and take from himself a nation from the midst of another nation by trials by signs by wonders by war by a mighty hand and an, and an outstretched arm by great terrors according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes to you it was shown that you might know that the Lord himself is God there is none other besides him out of heaven he lets you hear his voice that he might instruct you on earth he showed you his great fire you heard his words out of the midst of the little fire and because he loved your fathers therefore he chose the descendants after them and he brought you out of Egypt with his presence With, with his presence and his, with his mighty power driving out from before you nations greater and mightier than you to bring you in to give you the land as an inheritance as it is this day. Therefore know this day, consider it in your heart that the Lord himself is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. There is no other. <clears throat> you shall therefore keep his statutes and his commandments which I command you today that it may go well with you and with your children after you and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord your God is giving you for all time. Amen. Uh, it's directly uh, connected by God created the obedience of man with his prosperity with his long days and his health on this earth and the New Testament is even more uh, intensely connected because it's written it's written by John in his last epistle which is which is 90 after uh, 90 AD which is uh, it's uh, addressed to servants and maid servants to Gaius and for, to all of them and it says beloved I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers And this is especially a wish for Gaius. And the main goal is for the soul of the child of God to be prospering. And more specifically, for the soul of the servant and the maidservant, as it's written in the latter days, I will pour out my spirit in the latter days on my servants and maidservants in order to prophesy. They, the intent of God is for people to prophesy, to speak through the Holy Spirit, especially in the latter days. Meaning, not to say whatever they feel, understand, or know, but as and the mouth speaks from the excess of the heart but to, but to speak from the Spirit of God but to speak the love of God through the Holy Spirit the heart to be intensely clean washed with the blood of Christ from a uh, coming in, in a heart from a person who does not hold any bitterness or roots of bitterness and is completely clean and forgives and doesn't hold a grudge against anything and thirdly to have a sincere heart a true authentic heart before God not to say vain things vain things not to speak those things but his heart to to be uh, to to worship God in spirit and in truth 
if God, if, if excuse me, if a, man, a person has such a heart as it is written, my son, keep your heart with all care because all issues jump from your heart. When oh, a person has a heart washed with the blood of Christ, moved by the love of God the Father, which is poured in the heart through the Holy Spirit, and a heart that is reigned by the truth of the Holy, of the Holy Gospel, that's a true heart, then you can only have a person's soul prospering, the inner man, to be prospering before God. For God to to prosper him, anything he or she does to be blessed by the Lord, his words to be words of God, like stones that are ca that are thrown, and find the targets, resulting in blessing of God. And one such a person is prospering in his soul or her soul and he is prospered by God not by f God's special favor but because he, he or she knows he knows how to reign his heart according to the will of God not I I know that in our heart we need to have dwelling the love, the truth and the cleanliness and the goodness of God. And then the heart is prospering. And then all my actions are prospering. And then comes the wish of the Word of God. The wish of Christ. And the wish of, of John to the disciples then. I pray for you as your soul is prospering and to prosper in everything in your life like in your health as well here is a person who indeed is reliable before God then God can trust him for his work for his glory for his inheritance and for the expansion of God's kingdom when the dear brother when the word of God it reveals to us such simple things that have such a strong impact in our lives There's a, and this is when I say simple it's not really simple to have your heart filled with love with truth and cleanliness because God is doing this it's simple because we only seek this. We only seek this. Please, Lord. Been filled the Holy Spirit. Fill my heart with love. M make your heart to be reigned by your love. You, Christ, that you are the truth of the way in the life. Because my heart is human. Cle Cleanse in with your blood, Christ. You'll see how our lives takes another dimension. Try this, and you'll see. I don't know how long it's going to last. It's going to con continue or remain in this blessing as long as you s strive with this particular pr uh, prayer. It's amazing for whatever you're doing, God to prosper. Can this happen? Yes, of course. It depends on our heart. Of course it can happen. And it's, it can be each, easily achieved because Christ does this. We read this. We believe it. We ask for it from the Lord and we are prosperous so God would do it and the Lord is going to work this special work which is prepared for every one of us the Lord is going to make us his servant or maid servant because he because the Lord needs a reliable maid servants 
and servants and he needs those kind of servants in the family in the church and increase those kind of servants and made servants in your job in your work environment in your relatives in you. the Lord needs those kind of the Lord is seeking those kind of people <clears throat> how does Christ how does he say this in 13 uh, 13 chapter. This is the Gospel of Matthew. This is this is chapter 13, the Gospel of Matthew. And it's. The kingdom of God is resembled with the good pearl because the Lord is seeking good servants and made servants. The Lord, having found one person who is a precious pearl, is Paul, David, and in the filth of the hypocrisy of Pharisees. God found that kind of servant. The Lord is looking at one pearl like this. Verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he uh, found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Uh, God buys this precious pearl with the blood of Christ, and that precious pearl is useful to God. It says in the Old Testament, since you were found precious in my sight, I glorified you. When the when the Lord found Israel among the other nations, He chose Israel. And then when the Lord finds somebody, He trains or she trains that person, that precious pearl, and it has to be clean, like Paul. The Lord trains that precious pearl. He gives him His Word, His Holy Spirit. He gives him all internal powers, heavenly powers, in order to use that pearl for His glory. If we seek the Lord with our mind and heart and spirit, the Lord seeks those kind of people. And those, God in that person, Christ and that His servant, Christ and Peter. Did Peter make mistakes? Of course. Well, of course he did. Mista he made mistakes. Uh, everybody makes mistakes. Christ and Paul. Christ and John. Divine appointments. And it's not Christ and the masses. It's Christ and an individual disciple. This is, uh, this is a pattern that we see from that those times. Who is Moses? Who is a precious pearl? Who is a person who the Lord predestined from the foundation of the world when he was 80 years old? Who is a forgotten person who was shepherding sheep in the land of Moab? He had married a Midianite. He was, we would say, was a person who was useless for God. But he wasn't yourself, but the Lord led him to be humble, so that when he would be humble, the Lord would raise him up. The Lord cannot collaborate with proud and the strong ones. The Lord sought the abased people of this world in order to reject the um, strong, the uh, uh, <clears throat> the strong ones, the mighty, and, and the proud. So don't look upon our mess, but look upon Christ and the, and the Word. Of course we're a mess. And I'll say something else. May the Lord grant us to improve. For people who are nothing, uh, miserable, pitiful, even we do all the will of God, 
we're nothing else than useless servants. What can the screwdriver do without the electrician? A seesaw without the carpenter it can do nothing. But when a tool makes it to the hands of Christ, there is no better, better tool. There is no better, there are no better hands, and the hand, no better tool than the hands of Christ. Oh, the Lord is going to do great things then. Uh, Moses says, God ordered me not to do miracles and great signs, but to command me to teach you statutes and judgments. I didn't study as a theologian in order to teach doctrines. What am I? Just a man that I hear and speak. Nothing else. Yeah, but you're useful because you hear, you listen. And you're useful because you say those things that you listen. And because a third, you listen, you do all, all the things that I'm telling you, Moses. And you do what I'm telling you to do. And you're useful, Moses, but you also need to be reliable. And you'll be reliable. If you f a man that fix your heart to have truth, love, and cleanliness, I heard from the Lord says Moses. Um, t in verse fourteen, Deuteronomy chapter four says, "I was commanded to teach you statutes and judgments that you may observe the land which you cross over to possess, so you prosper." so that you live long days so that you enjoy the presence of the Lord and His blessing. Moses has to do a work. He's got a job to do to take care to take care of what God is trusting him to do. That's the old brother, the younger brother. It's a sister with her example. You got a mission in the Church of Christ to edify with your presence, with your words, with your appearance, with your humility, and especially with your obedience, obeying the Word of God. When I hear, brother, for ourselves, how can I understand this? So, uh, how can I make you understand this the way the Lord conveyed it to me? I'm not, do I'm not doing everything that I do because I love you. I do it because I love all the others. Because of the others, I bless you. For the others. I collaborate with you. But you are not the center of my love, the center of my intention. But you are my tool. You are his tool. Do you listen? You are just his tool to want this and desire this and seek this so that you receive this from the Lord. Of course, the Lord loves you. From the, from the moment you made a decision to become a servant of God, the, the love of God changes, becomes in the sternness of the Lord to you, servant and maid servant. And thus, Moses, when you know what he said, this amazing servant of God, God was angry with me. Is this possible? The man who was above all people meek to have to fall in this to fall in the uh, uh, sin uh, to, f to fall and have a moment where God is angry with him, and the Lord says, "I'm not going to enter the 
the land of the promised land. I'm going to take you to pass away from this life before this happens. Because when God chooses those kind of people, f first people, maybe they will become a lot of people. May God forbid. When God chooses people, in order to walk with absolute obedience because he shows his word to them. <laughs> the more you know, then the more they'll ask from you. The more you say, you say from, you know, from God, the more God demands from you. And the more you do, the more uh, st stern and strict God is with you. And he seeks even more from you. So it's not simple to be within the Church of Christ if we have not made a decision of life and death. Saint Apostle Paul says, I made a decision of death, meaning to do exactly what God asked me to do even if I die. You know, you know when this is proven in his greatest difficulties of his life. When there was a, a whole city was up in roars. Uh, when they, and why did they do that? In order to have all the companions, the get and the capture the companions of Paul. And why did God allow this to capture the companions of Paul in order to lynch them? And if Paul here, and here Paul is tested, if he listens to his heart and tries to save his companions, he's going to die himself and his companions. But if he listens to God, he's going to save his companions. Listen to this, mothers, my sisters, if you make a decision to listen to the will of God and do it in your life, with the Holy Spirit in your heart, even if it seems irrational, or even if it seems harsh, I want to say, say even, I'm going to use even more crass words. That's inhumane what Paul did when he abandoned his companions in Ephesus when they were about to lynch them. But it was what God wanted from Paul. Because he trusted who raises dead because God raises dead and that's why it's not irrational and humane and harsh because he trusts those who raises dead with this r reasoning Moses speaks to the is nation of Israel and now the time has come for the, gonna, the time has come for you to possess this land uh, fortunately, I'm not going to enter because when God asked me to hit the rock, to have a water, to to have a, a rock gush out of water, I thought, uh, I thought of doing the same thing. But now the Lord, I did what God had previously instructed me: just hit the rock, and then water will come out. Maybe Moses out of out of habit, maybe he or disbelief. He hit the rock and no water came out of it. Uh, uh, he hit the rock a second time and because of grace and favor to his people perhaps or more than Moses and maybe water gush out. God was angry. Because with his servants and his maids, servants, God gets angry. When he trusts you, you cannot do something else. Do this. I'm not doing that. I'm going to run away from this. And so with this reasoning, where you're going to go, take care to preserve yourself not be corrupted 
from lies and idols. Duberman idolatry is um, a horrible thing. The Lord takes it away his heart and truth and puts it to the idols and sets it to the idols. He takes his heart from I can say little crosses. God forbid us. God's corruption is spiritual corruption. I can say little statues. Whatever you do, don't insist it. Take heed not to make idols for yourselves. Either human form, either from the birds, or the sun, the stars. The moon, there are not so that you worship. Oh, I gave those things so that you serve people. You are going to worship one and serve one, the Lord your God. If you turn your eyes to idols, you are corrupting, you corrupting your heart. You lost the faith of the Lord. You lost the the after you uh, lost your ability to be a servant of the of God. This is a horrible, it's horrible consequences. And when you beget sons, daughters, and you live a long life, and you become corrupted, and then I'm, pro I'm protesting to you through Moses. I'm protesting to heaven and on earth against you. Absolutely gonna be expelled from the land of blessing. It's over the land the promise went for you. It's over the place of death. It's over the favor of death. You're, you're gonna enter the other camp. Who is uh, in charge of the other camp is the devil. That's why a Christian has nothing that's like devil trust and no little crosses, uh, no little blessings. When the church, I had a cross, oh my God, I had a precious stone, a little slipper from a uh, Silver from a holy person. I had oil and vinegar. When I was waking up, I was looking to see if I had this in my heart. I was praying and I said, Keep me safe. My heart is constantly that cross. When I, believed, I was looking at that, I said, He thought I was keeping me safe. Oh, was I keeping this in order to lose this? Oh, look what's happening to a person. I put it on the side. I want God to keep me safe. But the consequences of those people who don't know, because during the times of ignorance, God's, God forgives bits. Um, excuse me, during times of ignorance, God forgives. But when you know and you have knowledge of the will of God, then things change. And then we're continuing back to the passage in Deuteronomy. You're going to be expelled from the promised land if you don't keep the will of God. And the Lord is going to spread you among the nations. And going to be left a few in number. And the nations, the Lord is going to put you. And then you're going to worship God's. And then you're going to be deceived to worship gods of, of precious stones and wood. Those which are false, so they cannot hear or see, nor can he eat. Then you're gonna fall into deception, into lies, and you will think that God is pleased. It will be against, against a, an angry God. Because doing ignorance, God allows and forgives. And doing time of weakness, God allows and shows favor. When we are ignorant of our sins, 
are not taken into consideration by God. We're baptized into the forgiveness of sins. When we are in ignorance, God, but when God regenerated us, He changes, He changed everything in our lives. He changed the desires of our flesh. When we want things of flesh, He changed the desires of our heart. When we want other things that one, that one God wanted, He changed our way of thinking. He's gave us new reasoning, a way of thinking like Christ. Since he changed us with his with the regeneration now, the Lord is asking us to be baptized and he took out the this <coughs> and since and now you'll know I'm bringing now, I give you a new mind in order to have knowledge of the truth of the Lord. And then the Lord even removes the, our weakness and, and then He even baptizes us in the Holy Spirit because it's written uh, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, will receive power from a high. Now, for good or for worse, we have knowledge of the truth and with this a might of the Holy Spirit to execute the truth. So now we are responsible before God. Servants and maidservants, we are responsible before God. Of course, the kindness of the Lord is going to bring us to repentance, but if our heart is corrupted by lies, we don't have the, the truth of the gospel. And then we hear traditions, thoughts, um, all ladies uh, teachings and we lose we lose our love for our brethren because he did this to me and that to me and then Christ says to him, and Christ is asking you uh, to love your brethren and you don't love them even though he didn't do anything God asked, uh, God did not ask us to love the brother who have not done anything against us. That's a deception. The Lord asked us to love our brother with all his fault. Because the Lord is training them, because the Lord is increasing him on her. Because together we're going to make it to heaven. And if our heart is corrupted from the truth, and the love, I said this already, I mentioned this already, the love, uh, and finally by, uh, is clean, uh, and we don't have any conflicts in our heart, and bitterness, because if we allow those things in our heart, it's going to be useless, even if I speak the tongues of angels, I'm, a, I'm useless before God, I'm an and tin, an empty tin can uh, make just a clanging noise, clanging symbol. Because I don't have any love. Because I'm not feeling the Holy Spirit. When I'm feeling the Holy Spirit, He is not poor because I'm not allowing the Lord to pour His love into me and I'm not having my heart to be cleansed and sanctified as I can. Seek peace with all people in order to sanctify the coming of your life without which you're not going to enter heaven. And I'll end up being rejected and cast out by God. And may God keep us. May the Lord keep you and keep me. The Lord is going to cast me out of the promised land. Not from the church. He's going to cast me out of His favor. He's going to cast me out of His presence, His blessing. I'm not going to be favored anymore because my soul is not going to be prospered anymore. If I don't repent in t on time, as we read yesterday, and things are going to get from worse to worse. And may the Lord keep us. 
dear brethren, responsible for the blessing of the Lord in your family, the church, and everywhere is God is a yeah, God has given us everything. Everything is ready in our lives. Everything is ready in your life. He's got a blessed plan. He's given you and granted you have His Holy Word and the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blood of Christ runs in order to cleanse your heart from everything. You and I, we are responsible. And, uh, and our responsibility is to be humble and say, Lord, please forgive me. I cannot cleanse my heart. Please cleanse the Lord. I cannot have love for this person from that uh, rascal. Don't call him rascal. Make me, Lord, to love him. I cannot do your word. I can execute your word. Seek from the Lord to give you strength to do it and you'll see how God is going to strengthen you because the Lord is asking us to be blessed th so that through us other people will be blessed we are agents of the word of God of the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God we're a pipe that the Lord is pouring our blessing either from the pipe ambitions, conflicts, ambitions, vain conceit is going to defile or from the pipe is going to come out the Word of God, the presence of God, the blessing of the Lord and the strength of the Holy Spirit from every one of us. It depends on every one of us. It depends on every one of us. Not to be blessing alone but to be a source of blessing to other people amen help us christ <laughs>